Hey y'all. So I saw that Destiny 2 Vault Cleaning is back in style. And uh, gotta hop on that trend if I want to maintain my search engine optimization. So we're gonna be taking a look at my vault and clearing it out. Now I know that your vault tends to get out of control pretty quickly. I think I've done a pretty good job. I'm uh, not quite sure how high I am on the number though. But uh, we'll see if we can fix this problem before it really spirals out of control. It is always funny when the uh, vault cleaning becomes popular again because you know that it's either a very boring time in Destiny or a very bad time in Destiny. And right now, I think it's just boring. So uh, let's take a look and see where we're at. Oh, 290, Jesus. All right, well, first things first, we're not going to worry about exotic weapons. I just keep a copy in here so I don't have to worry about pulling from collections. Uh, let's just get going. So first things first is Transfiguration. Why is this in here? I have it craftable. Oh, it's the old one with Drop Mag. That makes sense. Well, I don't need that. Where are we going to next? Next is couple of the garden weapons. You know, I'm of the mindset that these are going to become craftable very soon. I'm going to keep them just in case the pattern becomes available. I can use them as a jump start. Next up is Biting Winds. Ah, right, the swashbuckler bow. Yeah, I don't need that. I can just get another one if I do. Heritage, I believe I'm at one out of five, so I'm going to keep these three. I want to make that craftable at some point. Succession. Oh, that's not very good. Why is that in here? Fatebringer. Ah, I am going to keep this one. Thresh Firefly was very fun back when Thresh Firefly was a brand new perk roll. Forensic Nightmare. Ah, yes. This was actually one of, if not my first, enhanced crafted weapon. Grave Robber Swashbuckler. Unfortunately, not very good. And I could always just make another one. Bell Teradiddle. Oh, this was a fun one. I uh, actually considered doing a fun guns on this, but uh, stats for all, explosive head, it's fun, but it's not the sort of thing that really required me to make a fun guns on it, partially because it was old content at that point. Submission. Overflow Frenzy. Right. This is probably the best kinetic uh, submachine gun in the game, so gonna keep one of those. Ragnil, can't go wrong with that baby. Uh, crate, this is the crate. Subsistence one for all. Uh, is it the crate? No it's not. Deleting it. I bet I had that in there for infusion fodder. Syncopation, oh this was another one that I considered doing a fun guns on. Unfortunately, just like Fel Teradiddle, it was already old news. And it really has not stood the test of time the way that some of the other early stasis weapons did. Ostranger. Uh, I have a soft spot for this one. I'll keep it. Smite of Moraine. Same thing as Heritage. I don't have it craftable yet. Keeping it here for when I get more spoils. Uh, Defiance of Yasmin. Ah! This was my crafting weapon. I combined it with the Ragnailed frame. And it was actually really cool. It shot a, uh, a, a fairly consistent pattern of a circle with one bullet in the middle of 12 bullets. It was actually really cool because it, it worked as a shotgun close up and it worked as a sniper from far away. Now though, it's just a pretty good craftable firing line sniper in the kinetic slot. And uh, I don't have anything else like that, so keeping it. Next is the werewolf. You know, I like this one, but I haven't used this particular one and you can pull it from collections. Bye bye. Next is Hung Jury. Ah, that is the uh, ideal Hung Jury for me. Uh, Rapid Hit Firefly. So, gonna keep that one. Uh, Jararaka. Rapid Hit Headstone. Ah, that's right. When scouts were in the artifact as a champion mod, I had this in here, but no need. Uh, Seventh Seraph Carbine, Pugilist Frenzy. Ah! Uh, I know why this was in here. War mine sells. Have to pay respects. Bye bye. Prolonged engagement. Fun gun. Still like it. 
Don't use it as often as I used to because it doesn't have an artifact mod at the moment, but uh, not bad. Uh, next is Rufus. Not craftable yet, keeping it just in case. Uh, Nichols Reverence. The other good gun for Root of Nightmares for primary slots. Uh, Pugilist Hatchling? I have this craftable. I don't need that. Buzzard! Oh, man. If they ever fix Kinetic Trimmers taking a million bullets for sidearms to proc, I'm all over this. So, I'll keep it. Especially because it's adept. Autumn Wind. Oh, I love 540s. Demolition's Frenzy. Good roll. Keeping it. Nah, I don't need it. Let's see. Ah, Chattering Bow. Rapid Hit Kinetic Trimmers. Big fan. Uh, I actually thought about doing a Fun Guns on this one, too, but it just never happened. Uh, oh, another Transfiguration. Well, don't need that. Thing of you Don't have a Craftable yet. Keeping them so I can activate them. Uh, my Adept Warden's Law. Four times Frenzy. It's uh, not quite the god roll for that 100 build, but it's close. Uh, Malediction. Oh, right. I was going to play with this one a little, but uh, don't need it. Eidolon Ally, I have not finished the Necrochasm quest, but I do have the kills with this, so bye bye Psy Hermetic, this is not the one that Xur sold that all the YouTubers told you to go get because they love PvP. This was just a Frenzy wildcard one. I don't need that. Unending Tempest, Killing Wind Frenzy. I believe this is the only Stasis SMG I have in here at the moment. Yes, so gonna keep that one just because it fills the slot, nothing else does. And we got a bunch of exotics. Ah, now I might get some flame for this, but I will never delete this weapon. Uh, we finally got a 180 with the same roll from uh, Crota's End, but I have a soft spot. This is my most used primary weapon. Uh, maybe not the most kills, but definitely my most used primary weapon, that it is not an exotic. Uh, Valve safe. Ah, the old outlaw dragonfly drop mag. Unfortunately, not very good anymore. Uh, retold tail. One two punch shotgun in the energy slot. I'm gonna keep it. Arsenic bite. This is one of the better arsenic bite rolls, but as you can see, I have not used it. Bye bye. Uh, bye bye. Ah, the not fate bringer before they brought fate bringer back. Uh, again, I think the Ancient Gospel and the rest of the Garden weapons will become craftable at some point, so gonna keep it for infusion and deep sight purposes. Ah, Arc Logic! Oh man, you can tell I like this gun. Um, Killing Wind Frenzy is one of the best feeling like perk combos in the game, because you move faster, you shoot with a slightly higher range, you reload like crazy, so good. Uh, even though I haven't used it recently, yeah, I still highly recommend it. Especially if you are new to the game, this is one of the easiest guns to get because if you own Shadow Keep, you can load into the raid and do the little like acquire the pattern or not acquire the pattern, but um, the little quest from the lectern. You could just load into the beginning of Garden of Salvation, kill all the Vex there with an auto rifle, and have the quest pretty much complete itself for you. It's great. Super easy to get. I'll keep it. Uh, ah, Timelines Vertex. You know, we don't see these perks very often anymore. Shield Disorient and Disruption Break. I had this in here when Match Game was a thing, but Match Game's no longer a thing. Next up is Coriolis Force. Ah, this one is the only aggressive frame fusion rifle. And unfortunately, it sucks. It's also easy to farm. Uh, Prosterity. Don't have a craftable yet. Same thing for trusty. And then I actually have a decent trusty that I've kept in here in case I feel like using it. Uh, Death Adder. Eh, I don't need it. Grid Skipper. Ah, fun one. Uh, it's a 540. It's void. It's actually very good. It's held. It's held up even though it doesn't have a uh, what you call origin trait. I will keep this one. Sojourner's Tail. Rapid Hit Dragonfly. This was a funny weapon, and uh, it was obviously before I did any YouTube stuff, but don't need it. Vision of Confluence. This is a good one. 
Might become craftable at some point, gonna keep it. Same thing for Found Verdict, plus this is a really good one-two punch shotgun. In fact, considering that that's a one-two punch shotgun, let's get rid of that retold tail. Next is Plug One. Unfortunately, Plug One has been completely power crept. Bye bye. Uh, ooh, the RR4. This is a fun one because it's an aggressive, but thanks to Adept Big Ones, you can go for the Extended Mag, Bottomless Grief, and High Impact Reserves roll. You get seven in the magazine. It doesn't take forever to reload, but it's like one of the most consistent aggressive frame snipers in terms of just doing damage and not having to reload all the time because most aggressive frame snipers have like three shots this one's like oh seven easy uh battler highly recommend everybody should get that weapon uh the enigma unfortunately i don't use glaives anymore bye bye god that took forever uh explosive personality big fan of this one land tank is a horribly underestimated trait for uh, the origin slot. Uh, under your skin, this one I have not been as fond of. I do like explosive head on my bows, but no need for that. Uh, Lubre's Ruin. Have a craftable. I don't like this crafted roll. I don't like Laves in general. Bye bye. Forbearance. Uh, I'm not even going to bother to say anything. Keeping that. Insidious. One of the OGs. The second fun gun I ever did. Gotta keep that. Uh, Ogma. You know, I wanted to like Ogma a lot more than I actually did. And in fact, the sound of it shooting is one of my favorite sounding guns in the game. I think I'll keep it just for that. And then, this is the Funnel Web after Funnel Web fell out of style, but it's better than the one I had. So that's why I had zero kills on it. Uh, gonna keep that one, because you can never go wrong with a Void SMG. Uh, Hollow's Nile. Still like this one, very fun, especially on that Volatile Titan build I did a while ago. Uh, without Remorse, this one has held up okay. Um, now that I can level up for free, I'll probably keep it just so I can make it into that one um, Stats for All Incandescent role I mentioned in one of the fun guns way back when. Um, it, it's an alright one, but even if I do that, I don't need to keep it in here, so bye bye. Alright, Horrors Least. Now this one is an interesting case. You know, they used to have Horrors Least with Zinmom and Dragonfly before they did all the sunsetting stuff, and I really loved that gun. This one, however, I don't like as much. Next up is Midha. Don't have a craftable yet, gotta keep the two I need for the craftable for when I get more spoils. Ooh, Tarnished Metal. This was one of the very first Volt Shot weapons, and it turns out that Volt Shot did work with Demolitionist, at least I think so. But uh, since it's a scout, the origin trait always felt like a missed opportunity since it wants you to punch stuff, but it's a scout, why are you going to punch stuff? Bye bye Oh, an old Jurassic Green. Alright, this is an interesting case. Um, yes, I know it's red. Uh, it's pink now, if you care. Uh, anyway, this one is kind of funny because the handling is horrific. It's so funny that the handling is so bad. You would think this gun would handle like crap, but uh, thanks to Steady Hands and Search Party, the handling is actually like on par, if not better, than most other weapons. And I actually kind of have a soft spot for it. Uh, yes, partially because it's a 540. Um, if you do get one of these in the Halloween event that's going on right now, definitely throw a counterbalance on it though, because the recoil direction is terrible. It's really crazy how bad the stats are on some of these. Uh, but yeah, that's just how the holiday weapons for you. Uh, next up is, ooh, Path of Least Resistance. You know, back before they removed, uh, the match game modifier, this was my go-to weapon for adaptive munitions. Um, now it's still really good because of Volt Shot, I just haven't bothered to change off the adaptive munitions. I'm keeping this because it's the only ARC legendary trace rifle, and it actually does really good work. Uh, long arm, rapid hit dragonfly, but I don't really like it. Velis X, big fan of this one, but you can pull it from collections, and it looks like I probably pulled this one from collections actually. <laughs> 
Uh, Icolus SMG. You know, I really wanted to make this my bolt shot weapon uh, of choice, but um, the Brigand's Law that I have just ended up being better on pretty much every level. Like, every level. And that's already on my Warlock. This is craftable. No reason to need to keep it. Uh, haven't finished the pattern on that one, or that one. Skipping over it. Ooh, the Hero's Burden. You can tell I really like this gun. Uh, destabilizing rounds, the very first primary to get it. I'm keeping it, just in case I ever feel like it. Normally I end up using my, um, oh, the auto rifle. I, I'm blanking on it. The one from Garden. Uh, Reckless Oracle, there we go. Uh, but if I'm ever in like a fun mood, this is what I use. Uh, Soul Survivor. Oh, okay. Field prep, firing line. Highly underestimated. We're kind of due for a sniper buff here in a little bit. If we get one, slash when we get one, this is going to be a contender. Get it while you still can, because it's really easy to get now since you get the deep dive Ingrams basically for free just for existing nowadays. Tyranny of Heaven. Very fun gun. A lot of people say dragonfly, and I know that like I'm the dragonfly guy and and all that, and like my my YouTube uh, icon is the dragonfly symbol. But explosive head makes you actually get the kill, so the incandescent can proc. And I unfortunately have to go with consistent explosions over potentially double explosions. Uh, speaking of explosions, Nation of Beasts, dragonfly explosive payload. Haven't used this one much, but I don't have this one craftable. This is actually the only Last Wish weapon I don't have craftable at this point. So we're going to keep it in case I ever get more swells and decide to go after it. Point of the Stag. This is the new one, not the one from the exotic vendor. Or not exotic, but uh, Monument to Lost Lights. There we go. Uh, I like the Dragonfly and I like the Wild Card perk working together. It's actually very funny how that works sometimes. I am kind of sad about Pugilist on it, but since it's a limited time only Iron Banner thing, I just kept this because this was the best one I got. Um, Heliocentric. I almost did a fun guns on this one, but really uh, the only reason I was even considering doing that in the first place is because of Heal Clip. Um, it turns out that this sidearm is the fastest reloading weapon that can get Heal Clip. Uh, which means that you can kill a guy, reload really fast, heal, kill a guy, reload really fast, heal. Especially with Frenzy. Um, that was specifically what made it reload so fast, in addition to being a sidearm, which, you know, reload fast naturally. But, uh, it, it, it's, it's alright. It's not as good as I was hoping. Because the heal is really just, like, a heal. It's not like a, a, a proc of Devour or something. It's just like, oh, here's a little bit of health left. You're still going to die in a GM, plus it's a sidearm, so it's a little bit harder to justify. That said, I do like it for mid to, like, legend to hero type content. It's fun stuff. I'll keep it. Uh, on to heavies. Ah, sleepless. Tracking module Vorpal. Unfortunately, this one has been completely power crept. Bye bye uh, I have my bequest, which I don't have craftable. Fallen guillotine. Can't get rid of this one. This one is timeless, especially with Surrounded. Surrounded is a lot more appealing on a sword than on other heavies, and it is very much done its fair share of work. Uh, the Swarm Adept. This is a nice 360. Once I get my hands on the Crota 450 arc uh, machine gun, this will be first in line to delete. But uh, until then, you gotta keep it. The Heads of Vengeance, oh, nostalgia right here. Uh, this is the exact Heads of Vengeance that I used in that Fun Guns video that has aged terribly now. <laughs> uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I did a uh, Heads of Vengeance video uh, showing like this rocket launcher specifically against the uh, master final boss of uh, Spire. And uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, just throw a bunch of grenades. Turns out Bungie didn't like that, so they nerfed the Warlock Exotic that lets you do it. Now you can still do it on Stasis Hunter, but it's not really, like, optimal or whatever. But, they could make this craftable in the future. I'll keep it just in case. Uh, Recurrent Impact. 
Okay, this is one of the first stasis weapons we got. Um, and in fact, I think it might be the first craftable stasis weapon. Uh, don't quote me on that though. It, it's the first one I remember anyway. But uh, field prep headstone land tank on a machine gun. It's excellent. It's so good. The only problem I have with this machine gun is that it's a 900 instead of a 450. If it was a 450, it'd be a lot easier to land the headshots. But I love this thing. Cataclysmic, it's the one. You know the one. If you do damage, this is the one. Yeah. Uh, Typhon. Okay, if they buff grenade launchers, demolition explosive light Typhon is going to be up there. Keeping it just in case they do actually buff grenade launchers. Bump in the night. Um, unfortunately, Bump in the night is not as good as Palmyra. If you want a crafted stasis rocket launcher, go for Palmyra. Storm Chaser, it's the one. Uh, you know, it was cool for a while, then they nerfed it, and I was kind of surprised they did. Whatever. Columns Terminus. Uh, unfortunately, I like recurrent impact better. Uh, it turns out that even if it's a 360 and it's easier to hit headshots, recurrent impact with land tank just feels better. Plank stride. Okay, so uh, if you're on an arc melee build, this is the machine gun you want to use. Uh, grave robber, pugilist, right hook. It's perfect. So keep it for that. Otherwise, you don't really need this one. Taipan. Ah. I remember when Taipan first became craftable, everybody went crazy about it. It's good. That's about it. It's good. Terminus Horizon. This is a funny gun. Not a fun gun, but a funny gun. Uh, the idea being that you, you do your regular thing with your other weapons, you get a couple of kills, then you swap to this and you fire with Cascade Point and you stack Rapid Hit immediately because you fire at like 450 or something like that. I forget the exact numbers. Uh, unfortunately, not very good, and I never use it. Uh, Zephyr. Okay, Cold Steel is a cool perk. I am mad that Bungie has not put it on more stuff, but since they haven't, I gotta keep this one. Uh, Briar's Contempt. I don't have a craftable, so I've got the four I need once I get enough spoils. Caretaker's a cool sword. It's got Tireless Blade and Incandescent. It's very fun if you are going for like a Banner of War build. Uh, in like mid to low end content because it'll make stuff explode as you kill it plus you'll be healing like crazy thanks to Banner of War. Uh, if you haven't tried it and you've got the resources definitely give it a shot. It's very funny. Uh, another Swarm. Oh, this one must be newer. It's got the, the silver instead of the gold. In that case, this one is better than that one. Bye-bye. Uh, cold Comfort. Alright, it's the Cold Comfort. You know the one. Uh, next on, exotics. Uh, thankfully, uh, I'm not wearing an exotic in-game right now, so we should get all the warlock ones highlighted. But uh, what I like to do for exotics is I throw it in the vault, and then, you know, every week or so, whenever I feel like it, I just kind of hop in here and I go, oh, there's two in a row right here. Let's compare them. 64 with a ton of recovery, 66 with decent stats. I think I'll take the 64 in that case, actually. Now repeat that for every armor exotic in the game. Uh, as you can see, I've got pretty much one of each, and I don't really keep legendary armor all that often except for Warlock, since that's kind of the main that I use, but uh, I'm only really worried about if I have more than one copy of an exotic piece, and uh, it looks like I don't, which means that uh, we're done. Anyway, that was me vault cleaning. It's not that hard. See ya.